Hello YouTube and welcome very much to a new Schnittlabor soundcheck video. Today I want to explain you the new A1X4 acoustic multi effects processor from Zoom. Three, two, one. Schnittlabor International Review. There is also another video out there which explains the basic unboxing and all the connectors which you have here, the in and outputs and so forth. If you are interested in this, then just check the link in the top right of your video screen now. In this video especially, I want to go into very detail of all functions of this A1X4. So I will explain the memory stomp edit section, I will explain the settings, I will explain the equalizer and the um, general volume, of course the rhythm section, the inbuilt um, up to 30 seconds looper and I will explain what it is all about with these kind of five different slots which we have available here and last but not least I want to go into the stomp uh, elements, if you will, or the fingertip elements, which you find here. Plus, I want to explain the function of this uh, expression petal, which comes directly with the A1X4. This is what uh, the X stands for. There is also another version available, which is called A14 by Zoom. It's also a specific um, multi effects processor. It uh, lacks the expression pedal, therefore you have another input here for the exp for an additional expression pedal, but in this version the pedal is already included, so that's uh, maybe much more comfortable, especially if you like to work with such a expression pedal during your performance. Before we go really into everything, I want to just explain you a general usage thing which I like very much about this machine. Here you have the foot switches for working on the floor when this machine is connected to the floor. But in this case I'm working on a table and then it's maybe not so handy if you're using all the time these kind of like heavy buttons. And instead you can also use these little knots here which are much more handy and comfortable for table usage. So these buttons, this one here and that one is kind of identical but it has a different form and format and I like very much that they were thinking about such a comfy aspect of this machine. This one here, the expression pedal, you can use easily with the hand and also with the foot and you can change with this little screw which is hidden here also the force of this expression pedal to make it uh, more accessible uh, and more easy to use. This acoustic effect aims for many different uh, instruments as already explained in this other video. Here I'm connecting an acoustic guitar, a western guitar. I will go into one second into an empty pattern. It sounds like this. And you can see it's like very much uh, mistuned. So first I will explain you the tune. I intentionally mistuned uh, this instrument. Let's go for the tuner. You can call it by hitting these two buttons or the two fingertips buttons at the same time. And here I have a very little critic point, which is the case with many also tuners and so forth. The lowest frequency that you can set as a, as a reference, it's also 435 Hertz. So you can go higher, you can go to the standard of standard of uh, 440 hertz or higher uh, to 445 but then if you go down minimum is 435 hertz and i like especially to work with 432 hertz and i think it could be so easy zoom if you're listening just if you ever create a software upgrade it could be so nice if you allow us at least to go down to let's say 430 hertz so this would be much more flexibility sound wise and it could be a nice uh, upgrade uh, for this machine in future but now we will stay in this moment for with uh, 435 hertz 
the D is okay. Actually, I'm tuning this guitar one uh, whole uh, tone lower, so it's not tuned to E uh, with the lowest string, but to D, because I like this kind of like warm sound. So we have the D. see that you have an indicator using the LED buttons here and at the same time also you have this kind of like feedback using the display. So now we're getting closer, yeah? Last one will be completely mistuned. So already the tuner is a very decent um, and nice tool to work with and we can exit the tuner mode by hitting those two foot switches at the same time. This would be the the pure sound uh, of the guitar connected here and then from here it goes into the Zoom H6 with which I'm also recording the voice. There is an external uh, mid-side uh, microphone uh, connected and whenever I go really into presenting you some of the effect patterns then I will switch away the external mic which is connected here and you will uh, be able to listen to the pure sound uh, coming from this AX1 so this is just means some more additional work uh, for me in post-production but the advantage is that you will not have a mixed input from this microphone and uh, the internal recordings of uh, this guitar here. So this is what the guitar sounds like maybe. and we can go into a different pattern. This is a preset called acoustic guitar or maybe let's take this one here. So we have a reverb and all these kind of things as part of the setting. Before I continue with everything I just want to show you this equalizer here. So you have the low, mids and heights. It's in the beginning of the chain. Then all the effects come, maybe the aux input and so forth. And in the very end you have like a main volume uh, control. So this is like, you know, the volume here, it's in the very end. The equalizer is in the beginning and it kind of like filters the, the way of how the guitar sounds. If I will take out all the low frequencies. too much. So um, this is here the, the effect section. Now we go directly into the memory thing. So with memory you have access to kind of like 40, 49 different effects. Yeah, And then starting from 50 you have uh, nine uh, following empty patterns which you can uh, configure up to your own taste completely. But also all the other patterns. You can modify them and um, you can give individual names and so forth, which I will uh, explain uh, with uh, the following. So here this is the memory section, if you will. Then you have the stump mode, like stump box uh, mode, which in this empty pattern is of course empty. So all these kind of uh, uh, five different sections of stump box effects, uh, they are empty. Let's go to maybe uh, this, this one here, which I started with. If you look here, you go into the stump box mode. Then you see you have already five effects connected. You don't need to have five effects. You can also work with one or two if you need less. You have a, a acoustic guitar effect. You have a compressor. 
you have this uh, bone equalizer here it's like just a standard equalizer added uh, you have a hole like and this is kind of like a reverb i guess and then you have a pedal effect which is just uh, the the volume i will show you if i play so this is here now connected to the volume right And then uh, what you can do with the foot switches or the fingertip uh, switches is like kind of move around between these different uh, stomp box uh, effects and you can with the left one uh, activate them like bypass them or uh, activate them reactivate so for example without uh, the the reverb sounds like this then we put in this one again so this is the whole magic about this kind of um, like stump boxes which you have available here. But if you want to edit them in detail, then of course you have to enter the edit mode like that. So um, here now we are especially with the hall. So you could modify using these buttons now, uh, the desay, the mix and so forth. So let's say uh, here we are at 13. It sounds like this. And I can up this one a little bit, then it sounds like. Let's go back to 13. I like to keep the standard settings. That's the whole magic. So if you go to 2, you can edit the uh, compressor like that and so forth. So this is how this button is functioning. Let's go to the settings. Here we have add access to the chains so you can modify the order of the stump boxes which also can result in different sounds of course so let's say for example we take uh, number one here so i can edit the chain now and let's say i will put the first one to the second and the second to the first something like this so i put the first one you have this hand handle here and i will put it here so they exchange or of course i can put it back in this way this is uh, this uh, chain function one more in the settings you have a patch in the patch you can rename these patterns and uh, also change uh, their volume a little bit third one is uh, of course the save function so you can move patterns from one place to the other um like you you can kind of like copy one element put it somewhere else and so forth then uh, we have um, the setup function general setup just means um, you you select the beats per minute you can go into an auto save mode which will then uh, in certain moments update the information and uh, some few elements like this and last but not least in five you have a selector uh, what type of batteries you're using with this one um, you can go into an eco mode it's only relevant if you uh, if you run this machine with battery power you can uh, choose to have backlight and you can choose the contrast of this of this display here it's more or less self-explaining before we now go into the rhythm section and the looper section, I will also show you one more that you don't need to work with the general preset patterns. You can like from the basis um, create your own patterns uh, according to your wishes. Before I go into this, one last example, like three different sounds of what, how, like kind of how rich um, this effect processor really is. I will just like, let's say, uh, go into this blues version here, like. So this is a classical blues thing. Uh, two more examples. Like this here would be, for example, a very nice one, like a radio uh, sound. Yeah. You want to, to, to listen to the things from the distance. And uh, one thing which is very extreme, if you go, for example, to the 43, 
This is not a guitar effect, it's a trumpet effect. It's called ga ga ku, something like this. And this really shows the potential of all these kind of effect chains which you can create here. Like this is now like the guitar sounds almost like a synthesizer, I would say. Like So just for you to have um, a little impression of what you can do with the presets here. You can also like connect a violin for example and make it sound like an orchestra and so forth. So we go into an empty pattern now just to show you how to really work in edit mode also. Um, like for example we have one, two, three, four, five empty completely. If we go to one then, of course, now here you can uh, switch between different effects, like add a compressor, for example. Or you have a rack compressor. Or you have another one. So this is the standard uh, effects and there is like maybe 71 of them. Yeah, so a lot of choices. But you can also uh, choose between different categories by holding this one left down here and then switching on the right. I will show you a drive now like this. Mm. Sounds like this. second. One more interesting aspect here when we go into the single ones, this is the pedal cate category. So here you have just volume control with the pedal. But also you can go into a wah, -wah effect for example. Yeah, you have a pitch one, this is very extreme. like. So this is all the things that you can control directly with the And then of course you can edit them here using these buttons. Yeah, this is 360 now. of things to scroll through and it's called uh, could also be like <laughs> this was basically the um, the section explained you can put all these kind of five different stomp boxes into different combinations variations and then run them through this machine so last but not least i want to present you the rhythm section and the looper as promised in the beginning the rhythm section here it has uh, standard rhythms which you can start and stop using these two buttons yeah, it sounds like this. Nothing very surprising. It's like a standard you would find in all kind of machines. On the other side you have a looper section and the looper is up to 30 seconds and uh, now it's like kind of clean maybe there was in something else before you can uh, 
select the stop mode, how it should function. Very interesting here is the position um, se uh, section because uh, you can kind of select if the looper is applying uh, after the effect chain or before. Like uh, if you apply the looper before, then you have like this kind of pure signal uh, from the guitar which is going to be looped and then when you change the effects then of course you will uh, create uh, different sounds like this whereas when you um, hit the looper in uh, post uh, mode then all the effects are already being applied uh, within the loop uh, recording so this is important uh, to know and here of course you can also kind of like um, change um, the volume so this in interprets how how loud the looper will be when you record some signal uh, to it let's try an example with this uh, looper right now i have no effect uh, selected and in theory i will now uh, use my foot to start uh, the recording put one more to go to cancel so maybe something like a little uh, loop as you can hear and I could uh, let this one run and I maybe choose a different let's say I go into the presets number 29 it's a looper like to add this one I go into looper mode again and then I go into overdub and I add this one again and then like all these elements are part of it let's stop for a second here we don't want to go into a session I want to say one critic point is that unfortunately the only way to clean this looper would be uh, go holding into the clear mode and then everything is gone I would like much more if you would have a new layer for looper elements added to this one and then if you would record something and then you stop recording you go into the loop mode again you record something new which you maybe don't like so much and then it could be so nice to have an additional button to just um, delete the last aspect of the recording and keep everything else which would be very important for live sessions just imagine you have to always delete the whole loop there is different machines like from boss and so forth like some like the RC 505 and I think if I remember correctly which can just uh, like delete several aspects of the loopers this could be a, a nice improvement also for this machine here so I will also show you this in combination with the rhythm uh, section when you go into the rhythm section here for example I selected count which means pre-count on on so that means if I start a rhythm and then I go back to the looper section as I will show you then it will automatically introduce a pre-count uh, so that uh, you can record up to the precise point so let's maybe start with this kind of pattern here and then we go into the looper So now we go to the looper and now we want to record something and we will have like one, two, three, four. So then we 
we have this kind of, yeah, you know, thing going on. And then we can kind of like change to different, different elements here. And then we think, okay, maybe that's interesting. And we will just go into overdub mode. principle basically explained uh, just for you to know the basic functions we went into all relevant elements i will also do another video on the zoom v6 which just arrived and then maybe also there will be one more video where i will do a combination of all these kind of three elements the zoom v6 the ax14 and the zoom h6 for creating kind of like a live set. So thank you for attention. I hope this was a helpful video. If you liked it, please hit the follow and like button and maybe also hit the notification bell. Thank you so much and see you soon.